Good morning, everybody. This is Danny from Deep South Homestead. Back out in the garden this morning, guys. It is in the low 50s this morning. Great temperatures. The sun's shining perfect this morning. I mean, it's just calm weather. Everything's beautiful. Got the cows all moved to a new pasture. One and I've been up since daylight picking English peas. Now, we picked the cabin garden first, which we got right here. We got uh, probably four pounds, four gallons in this right here from the uh, cabin garden. We picked the front garden up here, which is the uh, garden up by the house. We got, I'm gonna say there's probably four gallons in this one, because this is a five gallon bucket. And so both gardens are doing about the same. You know, we were trying to check morning sun versus evening sun. Uh, it seems like, to be honest with you, seems like both gardens are doing about the same as far as English peas is concerned. Now, and they're still loaded. Guys, we've got, this is our biggest picking yet. This is eight gallons. Uh, we've got, you know, several pickings off of them already, but this is our best. And, and from the looks of it, we're probably going to get another eight gallons in the, probably in about three or four more days if the weather holds out. So we're excited about that. And we're going to attribute this to the Dr. Earth bloom and grow stuff that we put on the phosphorus uh, liquid that we mixed up that we put on this. Uh, these things have done fantastic this year. So, you know, I'm going to say that the Dr. Earth worked on this. And I'm going to show you something in a minute that makes me even believe that that's even more true. But... We're going to put a link in the description down below to the Dr. Earth Grow and Bloom uh, phosphorus uh, liquid fertilizer that we used on it because I think that that has made the difference this year. But I can, I can tell you this, as long as I can afford it for in the future, I'm going to be reusing it again. But not only that, we went back and we picked our few, look at these cucumbers here. We ain't got like three or four plants mixed in the garden here, but look at this. These are beautiful, guys. Ms. Wanda is going to be making some more relish. And let me say something. Many of y'all always say, would you do a video on this? Would you do a video on canning this? Would you do a video on canning that? Guys, we've been doing this for five years. We've done a video on everything that you can can. It's in the playlist. All you got to do, if you don't know how to find stuff, is just say... If you want canning potatoes, just type in, in the search engine up above on the YouTube channel, type in canning potatoes, Deep South Homestead, or canning tomatoes, or canning English peas, canning relish, canning squash, canning sweet potatoes, whatever it is that you want, we've got a video on it. Matter of fact, we might have several videos on it, because we do one every year. And guys, just go to the playlist, and if it's not on, if it's not on Deep South, then go to Wanda's channel, Crazy Days, and... A C R A Z Y D A Z E S. Guys, if we don't have it on Deep South, Wanda has it on her channel because we lots of times we just can't get them on our channel, everything. So check out Crazy Days and you'll find over there there's tons of things about making different kinds of anything you want to eat, just about, is over on Crazy Days also. So we're fixing to move over and we're going to pick the squash now. And we're Guys, squash has been a problem for us for years, but this year we bought the Hoss Tool seeds, and this is called the Gold Prize. It's a straight neck squash. The link will be in the description down below. Check out Hoss Tool seeds because they've got the most amazing seeds that we've ever grown. And we're going to also, after we get through the squash, we're going to show you some other things in our garden. Okay, guys, we've come down to the squash now. And let me mention, most everything we have growing in our garden this year, with the exception of a few things. Now, the celebrity tomatoes we're going to talk about in a minute didn't come from Hall's Tool. And the English peas didn't come from Hall's Tool. The English peas are our own seed that we save from year to year. But the other seeds that we're going to be talking about all came from Hall's Tool because we wanted to try their product out and see how it does. Now, this is the gold prize here. Squash, we don't... Uh, let me, let me pick one here. We always like to twist our squash. And let me mention something. When you're picking these squash, be careful if you have fingernails. Because if your fingernails gouge into this and scratch these squash, it leaves marks on them and they, they begin to dehydrate. So you want to leave a little bit of a stem. 
If you got something to snip it with, that's even better. But I just twist them and take them off. Now, this is a young one. We like ours kind of young. We don't like to let our squash get real huge and big. But the gold prize is, is a new one for us this year. We're going to experiment with small ones, and we're going to experiment with some larger ones, and we're going to see if the larger ones actually get tough uh, or anything like that. We'll let y'all know in future videos about that. So we're going to go down through here and start picking the gold prize squash from Hoss Tool. You always want to wait till the bloom is completely dead on it before you harvest it. Even if it's small, wait for the bloom to be dead. Nice. Good straight squash. I like them. I really like them. Bees in here, I hear them. Honey bees. Move these back without damaging anything. Look at that. Look at that baby. That's a nice squash right there. All right, these blooms have died. They're falling off. This is a perfect size right here for us, right here. We like that size right there. The seeds aren't mature in it. Another day. Get up in here. Now this is one of the larger ones we were talking about. We wanted to let a couple of them go to get a little bit larger to see if they actually had big seeds in them or anything like that. And when you're picking squash and you come across one that looks like this right here, you just as well take it off when you see them ribs in it like this because it didn't pollinate. It's never going to do anything, so you might as well just get it off and throw it away. Okay, now comes the thing. If you watched our video, we put the netting over this. Now comes the time to see how the squash plants have done under the netting because we're fixing to take it off. All right, guys, I think we've got most of it loose. We're gonna pick it up. We'll see if we see any difference. See a difference in height. I fix and say, I see a difference in the height. Oh, breaking leaves, I don't wanna do that. The one thing I'm noticing There's definitely a difference in height because I think they were reaching for sunlight. It might have uh, might have been deterring some of the sunlight. Now they they look a little bit more spindly and not as lively. The uh, they don't look as strong and healthy looking as the other ones do and. The squash is, uh, I see one down here. See, yep. the plants are just falling over. That's uh, not a good thing. Not a good thing. Uh, they, they, haven't, they haven't learned to hold their self up. So we're going to leave it off for a while. We're going to leave it off, yeah. I'm gonna get a couple of these little squash off of there. That in there's kind of soft, we'll just have to see. Okay. So they just fell over. Yeah. 
overall I'm not happy with that. Uh, there's lots of blooms, there's no pollination, looks like. Yeah, that's what I'm looking like. Um, I'm not sure how many I'm pollinated. I think I'm on, because here's another one here that, that didn't pollinate. One here that didn't pollinate. Yeah, these didn't pollinate, so here's another one. So I'm not I'm not happy about that. That's that's a that's a no. <laughs> that's going to be a no for me. Uh, here's might as well take this one off. It's kind of soft. We'll just have to see. Um, lots of them are just tiny with no bloom. We're just going to have to we just have to see. You know, I, I think I'm going to leave it off. To be honest with you. Uh, but I want I want to move behind me here. This is the uh, peaches and cream sweet corn. Now I, I'm not really familiar with this variety of sweet corn that much. I just know that it's tousled at. Uh, look at this. Um, four and five foot high. It's already tousling. I'm not used to that. I'm used to my corn tousling when it gets up here like six and eight feet tall. Uh, so I'm hoping that this is going to be okay. Now, we already have ears forming in it. Right here, you can see the ears are beginning to form. They're starting to silk out. Uh, I hope everything's going to be all right. It's kind of short. I'm not used to that. But you know what? I'll tell you what I'm learning. If it comes out and it does good, I'm okay with it tossing short because that way the wind is not tearing it down. That's one thing that we've had a problem with here at Deep South Homestead is the wind tearing our sweet corn down. And, and believe me, in the last couple of weeks, we've had our share of wind here. It's been like, like the last two weeks, we've had two major storms come through. Now, the first one we didn't get much rain from, but we got the wind from it. And the second one it came through, we got the wind, the rain, the severe weather, the tornado warnings, we got all that with it. So, and this stuff is still standing here perfect. So, I'm really pleased. Now, this comes from Hall's Tool. This is the um, peaches and cream. Now, I love my sweet corn. Uh, we're going to check it out and see how it does. Now, I'm going to move over. And, guys, we're going to go, we're going to go look at some real tomato plants. Let's go look at them. Okay guys, we're fixing to look at the tomatoes. Now these are a hybrid. I used to didn't grow very many hybrids, but I have learned here at Deep South Homestead because of the Grand Solar Minimum, because of pests and disease and stuff like that, I've got to choose a tomato that has a lot of disease resistance to it. Now, I've got so many seeds now that's heirloom, I don't really need, need to save any seed right now. And these, definitely I can't save from these. I mean, I can, but they won't come back as a true celebrity hybrid with all the disease resistances but guys these tomatoes were actually I, I raised them in the Hoss tool the new seed trays they have out it's got 162 uh, little sections in it I like them because they're made where the roots grow straight down they don't grow around in circles and I grew 162 of them because we was going to have the gathering and I was going to take some to the gathering and bless you all with them well being see uh, COVID-19 happened and we didn't get to have the gathering guess what Deep South Homestead had 162 celebrity hybrid tomato plants that they had to do something with now we've blessed Paul and Amanda with several of them uh, I gave my supervisor some of them but I still had a lot of tomatoes left now we have some of them here we have them all over our property. We have them in the greenhouse. We have them beside the greenhouse. We have them over at the cabin. We've got them everywhere. So um, I want you to look at tomatoes on steroids is what I'm calling them because my daddy told me you get what you get out of something, what you put into it. And I've told y'all all along this year, I am dumping some fertilizer stuff this year, whether it's composted, uh, synthetic, I am 
putting it to it this year because I feel like this is a year to have stuff. And guys, I want you to look at my celebrity hybrids on steroids. Look at these to plant. Look at these plants, guys. These things. Now, let me mention this celebrity hybrid. It's kind of a kind of an oxymoron here. It's called a semi indeterminate. We tested some in the greenhouse this past fall. They're supposed to be a bush tomato, like a determinant, but they call them semi-indeterminate. Once they get through loading up with tomatoes, they will actually begin to grow again and keep making tomatoes. We have one over at the greenhouse, I mean at the cabin right now, that's over a year old, still loaded with tomatoes. Matter of fact, one that got two off of it this morning. So. I want you to just look at these things. I want you to look at the size of the stalks. I want y'all to look at the size of these stalks here. My, look at my, they're, they're bigger than my thumb. Look at that. These things are like trees. I mean, look, I reached my hand around this tomato plant. Look at this. These things are like trees. I mean, they're growing up huge. They are literally loaded with blooms. Now, I want to mention, I came in here with the Dr. Earth grow and bloom and i poured it to these tomatoes and i mean guys at the same time i put the dr earth to it i also put the calcium nitrate to it and these babies are my babies now look at them these things are like trees in here here's another one look at this thing look at that they're like trees look i'm i'm tall these things, this right here on me, is five foot. Now, these plants are between four and five feet tall right now. Completely disease resistant right now. Uh, no tomato worms, no bugs. Uh, all research I've done on tomatoes says the healthier the plant, the less likely pest problem you have. And so far we're having very minimal amount of pest now look at this plant here. Already got nice tomatoes forming on it, guys. I mean, these things are just gorgeous. And there is blooms everywhere. So I can tell you now, I'm going to get one of my baby's arms over that wire right there and let it hold it. That way it'll hold it up. There we go. Get that thing where to hold itself up there. As we, as we come on down through here, there's little tomatoes all in here on these little tomatoes. I try to come along here every day and I try to work with my tomatoes. I mean, I come in, I move the string out the way and I, I try to keep them up as straight as I can, put it in there where they'll hold themselves. And another thing I like to talk about, we're growing tomatoes. We're not growing leaves. All disease on tomatoes starts from the bottom. I come along here. If I see a leaf that's got a few little spots on it like that, it comes off. These bottom leaves serve absolutely no purpose. We get them off of here because I'm trying to keep these things disease resistant. And guys, another thing I attribute this to is this ground cover here. Now we leave a strip between our ground cover when we're planting like this. We tried um, burning the holes in it and it, it we don't see much difference between burning the holes and putting it out with a strip in between it like this. Now you have to do a little extra weeding. You got to come along here, you know, and you got to pick the weeds out like this. But the truth of the matter is here at the deep south may not be this way everywhere. But if you don't disturb that soil, the seeds will not keep coming up here. And once we pull up a few every little weed that we have here and get things out, we usually don't have to worry about it anymore because our gardens are, are pretty weed free. We don't have a lot of weeds in them, but we will if we don't maintain them. But as you can see, most of ours stays pretty clean. A garden is a labor of love. When you come through here, I, it's just like raising kids. If you leave it to itself, it's no good, it's like a child. But if you baby it and take care of it like you're supposed to and train it, it'll reward you in the end. And guys, all of our stuff is doing beautiful.
all the way down through here. There's not enough good I can say about what's going on right now. If everything keeps going and we don't have any bad weather or anything crazy happening, we this year should have a bumper crop of everything. Now that we're out of the tomatoes, I want you to show you this. This is called the, the jambalaya okra. This come from Hall's Tool. We have a whole row of it here. We raise this uh, from seeds in the Hall's Tool trays and we actually come out and set the plugs out down through here and guys, it's been cold a lot here in the mornings and that's the reason the okra is kind of slow getting started. But once it starts warming up, this stuff's gonna start cadillac and I can tell you. Okay, this has been a little bit about what's going on here at Deep South Homestead. Okay, guys, we're also beginning to harvest some of our potatoes. Now, the garden right next to us right here has the blue potatoes in it. And uh, Wanda and I, you know us, we're sneaking a few of them out there because we just got it. We, we just have to. We have so many potatoes, we can't help it. We have to sneak a few out. And we're enjoying them. They're doing fantastic. It looks like we're going to have a bumper crop of them. We're having the proper amount of rain, the proper amount of cool weather. God is being good to us. The garden you see here behind me is a utopia of food for us. It's doing really good and it's producing plenty for us to be able to put up this year. And guys, this is only one of seven of these that we have. Every one of them has something different in it. It's more of an experiment than anything else just to see what does best where on our property. And I know this question is going to get asked. Danny, why do you plant so much? We plant a lot just simply because, guys, you got to have something for the insects, you got to have something for the animals, and you got to have something for yourself. And then if you have someone you want to bless, you got to have some for them. That's why we plant as much as we do, because we're not going to win on every plant. Some plants, the insects you're going to get, some plants, the deer, the squirrels, whatever, coons, possums, some they're going to get. And some we're going to want to use to bless people with. And guys, that's how our native friends that originally lived in this country before we came here, that was their thoughts, that was their mentality of things. And I'm carrying it on here at Deep South Homestead. So I hope that today, by seeing the things that we've grown here in our garden, the things that we're harvesting, we're not just telling you about it, we're showing it to you so that you know we're not making it up. It is real. Guys, I hope this has been a blessing to you, and I hope you have a great garden season this year for yourself, and I wish you happy gardening. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.